Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 12 in the platform specific series of my 650 to assembly programming tutorials. Now we've been looking at joysticks on a wide variety of systems and we've looked at analog and digital joysticks just depending on the system. We're going to be looking at the Apple II this week and the Apple II also uses an analog joystick. However, unlike the previous systems we've looked at, the Apple II joystick can't be read in with a single byte from a memory location. We actually need to do a special procedure to read in the analog value from that joystick and we're going to be looking at that today. Now, as with all of our other tutorials, we're going to be converting to a digital effective joystick and it's going to use a single byte for each direction of that joystick. So we're going to have an up, down, left and right in bits zero to three. We're going to have a single fire button because we don't have more than one fire, at least for a two joystick system on the Apple II. And we would have a start for bit seven, but again, we don't have one on this system. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now on the Apple II, there's a wide variety of ports we're going to need to use to read in the joystick. Now, there are four analog inputs. These work in pairs for each of the two joysticks. So one will be the up-down direction and one will be the left-right for each joystick. There is also an analog input reset. You see, when we read in from the analogs, we need to send a reset command and then we need to time how long it takes for a certain bit to change on each of these analogs. And that amount of time will be the position of the joystick in an analog sense. And then we will need to convert that into a digital direction. So we've got our reset, we've got our pair, two pairs of analogs for each of the joysticks, and then we have some switches. Now, in theory, there are four switches on the Apple II, but to my knowledge, the third one can't be used. And the second one, which is effectively the same as the shift key, I believe is very hard to use. So we're only going to be using input zero and one in this example for the two joysticks. So each joystick will have a single fire button, and that's what we'll be doing, at least in this example. So we're going to be using this code here. We're going to run this read controls dual command and just show the results to the screen. The results are stored in the zero page entries marked as ZH and ZL. Let's have a look at it. So here's the example code running here and I've got my two joysticks here. And if I press up on the first one, you can see bit zero changes. Down changes bit one, left and right. And then the first fire button, there it is. And on the second joystick, up, down, left and right and then my fire buttons here. So you can see we're effectively operating two fire buttons on two different joysticks here. So that's what we can do with the Apple II hardware. And of course, being as we can show the results on the screen, we can use this within our game. And this is what I did with Grime 6502, although that was of course only a single player game. So let's have a look at the code that's doing the dirty work on this machine. So in, as in all cases, our read controls dual command is doing all of the work. Now we use a command called process joystick. We call this function here. And this is handling one of the joysticks because we can handle both joysticks in effectively the same way. The only difference is we need to use a different source memory address for the fire button and also the two in analog inputs. So we're going to be using fire button zero here for the first joystick, CO61 here. So you can see we're reading in A from CO61 here. And we're using the analogs 64 and 65, CO64, CO65 here, for the up, down, left and right of the first joystick. And we're passing those by loading into the X register here, the first of the two analog directions. And we're loading in the value of the fire button into the accumulator here before running this command. And then when this command starts, this process joystick command, we're rotating one bit out, effectively the fire button, into the zero page entry ZAS here, which is our temporary buildup for the data. Now, I do want to point out that I didn't completely write the example today. This is a very tough example. Um, so it's actually based on the one that came in the Understanding the Apple II document here. We'll just have a look at it here. It has been modified. I don't believe in any negative way, but um, it's been purely to design to work with digital. So if you wanted to use analog as a true analog value, you might want to go back to this original one because it would possibly work better. So we're based on this, but um, anyway, let's have a look at what I've come up with. Now, the first thing is we're using the same code to do both joysticks. So once we've read our fire button in, we now need to use some self-modifying code. And so we're using the X register, which is the first of the analogs, and we're modifying this address here. Now, the default values we'll see here are fine for joystick one, but if we're using two joysticks, we do need to modify them for the second joystick. So once we've used the value in the X register, we're then increasing it and using the value again in two other locations. And the reason for that is that CO64 and CO65 are joystick one, and CO66 and CO67 are joystick two. So we're just doing an increment there and doing our self-modifying code. 
Once we've modified this function to do whichever joystick we're looking at, we need to strobe the joypad. This resets the counters of the X, Y axes, and this is something that's important. Then we're setting the X and Y register to zero because these are going to be used to count the current position of the joystick. So what do we do next? Well, what we're needing to do is we're needing to read in from our two ports, C064 and C065 in this case, and we need to wait until the top bit becomes a zero. And while it is not a zero, we need to increment the the respective counter, either X or Y. And once both become zero, the X and the Y result will be the current position of the joystick between about zero and about 100. And so that's what we need to do here. So first we're reading in from C064 here, which is the Y direction. And if it is minus, i.e. the bit, the top bit is one, then we are going to need to still continue here. And so what we're doing is we're incrementing the Y counter here. There's a small delay here. But then if we do have a zero here, then we need to jump down here because we've already completed the Y part of the function here. Now, whether or not we've completed the Y, you'll notice that the next result is the same. We're reading in for C065 here for the, sec for the first joystick at least. And again, what we're doing next is we are checking if the X counter is already complete. Now, if the X counter is complete here, then we jump back to the start. But if the X counter is complete here, then with this part of the code will only be executed if the Y counter was already complete. So if X and Y are both complete, then we've now got our full analog value. So we fall out into here. If it's not complete, then we need to increment the X counter here. And that's what we're doing. So it's quite tricky, I, I understand, but basically we're reading in Y here and we're skipping over to here if Y is already read in. And then we're reading in either here or here if the X counter is complete and we're incrementing the X counter here. So there's effectively three stages here, just depending on if X is complete, if Y is complete, or neither is complete. Of course, if both is complete, then we're just falling through to this stage, and this will then convert the analog values into a digital value. And this is done by setting the top, and this is done by shifting two bits into the ZAS zero page entry. And this will just depend on whether our value is B below hexadecimal 33 or greater than hexadecimal 66, which is the approximate range for this joystick. And we, we're defining a dead zone there. So if it's in the middle of that range, neither direction's been pressed. But if it's lower than hexadecimal 33 or higher than hexadecimal 66, then it's considered to be left or right or up or down respectively. And we're just setting and clearing the carry flag and then rotating those bits into here. And that's what converts the analog value into a digital joystick direction. Now, of course, once we've run this once, we then store the value that remains in the accumulator at the end of this function into the H first for joystick one, and then the L for joystick two here. We, of course, use a different port for our analogs and a different port for our fire button, but that's really all there is to it. Now, as I say, the code here is quite complicated and it, it does kind of make my head spin a little bit because of this weird nesting. And of course, the timing has to be quite accurate on it because depending on whether you, the X is being read in here or in here, you, you've got to kind of try and make all of the speeds balanced out because otherwise the, the timer would give a different value depending on whether the Y was being pressed or not. But the good thing is, of course, is if we just want to read in from the joystick, then you can just use the code as is here. Or if you want to use the original analog version, then you could use this one here. It, it's something that you know, it's nice to understand, but if you don't understand it, it it's going to work for you. So um, anyway, that's how the joystick works on the Apple II. It's a bit unusual for in respect to the systems we're looking at here, but I do know other hardware does work in this exact same way. And I think it really comes down to being able to send an analog value using just a single bit of data communication. So just with a single wire, you're able to give an analog value from zero to 100 or zero to 1000 or whatever. So as I say, while it's something new in these joystick tutorials, I'm pretty certain it's not something that's that remarkable with regards to transferring analog data, at least within 8-bit systems. Anyway, while the code is rather confusing and the concept's a bit of a pain, that's really all there is to reading the analog joystick on the Apple II. So now you'll be able to use this code and make your own games with it. As always, please have a look at Grime6502 if you want a template to start with your games because it's free and open source. Thanks for watching today anyway, and goodbye.